That's right, popcorn once again. All right, so I um, found myself in the UK, 2010. I kind of skipped a whole lot of parts because I was probably in a hurry. But um, yeah, the guy responsible for that is a lawyer. He loves music too. His name is Obi Nwokiji, OJN Solicitors. And that's a shameless plug. Like, these are the real friends that I have. Like, he became a very good friend. Like, I didn't know him at that time, but he dropped some names of some people that I'd heard about in the past. Like, uh, there was a group back in the day in the 90s, mid 90s called Emphasis. And he was a very good friend of one of them. You know, cool down, no fix. They had that song back in the day. Like, only the old school heads will know that. So, um, one of the guys, K16, and he was still rapping at that time. He played me some of the guy's stuff. The guy used to do this double time rapping. And they asked me if I would jump on a song with the guy. I said, yeah, I'll jump on a song. But they, they, they sent me a song. I just stand up. And he was rapping. I just told the guy, guy, I don't jump on these type of songs, man. Can't, can't we do something else? <laughs> they didn't really like that. But they told me later on that they were like, this guy's empty form, you know. But hey, man, it's just me. The, the reason why Mode 9 is Mode 9, it is what it is. I don't jump on stuff that I'm not comfortable with. If I'm not comfortable with it, I'm not going to do it. So, um, yeah, this guy got me to London and uh, got me my uh, right of a bold. It was just after the Hip Hop World Award. I think I won. I won a phone. Look. Everybody used to make fun of me then because I used to go online. My internet used to start nine o'clock. I just had one of those internet that starts nine o'clock and it's on my laptop. So I'll be tweeting from my laptop at nine o'clock. Then one fan just goes, <laughs> Mode 9, why is it that it's only at night that you tweet nine o'clock? I just says, none of your damn business. So I think Kraft, I was talking to Kraft and Kraft just said, man, go and get yourself a Blackberry so that you can tweet from your Blackberry. Like all these things, I didn't really care about these things. I wasn't really a phone phone person. Didn't care. But I just it just all made sense because you know guys were clowning me that only tweet nine o'clock. I didn't see that as being a problem, man. Like, so what? So what if I tweet where my internet goes on nine o'clock? I had that Spectronet internet. <laughs> if they knew the kind of albums I used to download, the movies I used to download with that Spectronet. <laughs> oh boy. But then again, uh, I bought myself, I remember that day. I bought myself uh, a Blackberry, right? And the next day was the Hip Hop World Awards. Now, they were giving away Blackberries to winners. So I won and I got a Blackberry. So I had two Blackberries. I was like, damn, I shouldn't have bought that Blackberry 42,000. I should have just chilled and just won it. So it was just good stuff was just happened to me around, happening to me around that that time so i got a call from the embassy saying that i should come for a meeting june 1st i came brought all my ballets and everything and they said it was okay so i went back there before my birthday and i got my right of a boat and my ticket was already bought boom i just told obi obi was like yeah i told you i told you not to worry i told you because i've been trying to get to the my paper straight, right? For a long time, for a very long time. Even when uh, uh, I met Sound Sultan and Lambo back in the day in 2002, and they even like, they were like, Lambo was like, man, you need to get get yourself to London, man. You need to go do that thing, get your British passport. I, I tried it, they frustrated me at, at that time. But you see, when I hooked up with Obi, Obi's a lawyer, so he knew the exact way to go. He was like, get a ride of a boat first. And when you come to London, you get your British passport. So there were some young guys 
I met through a lady called Amanda. Let's just call her Amanda. She was really good to me. She was a lawyer too. Like these are people that really held it down for me. She held it down for me. A very nice person. Very, very nice person. She gave me good advice too. So she brought these guys. They came to Nigeria, boys from, you know, living in UK, doing music and everything. Zioum was talented though. Livid wasn't as talented. He was the big brother of Gobi Zioum. Livid's internet grind was on point. He was heavy on the net because he was this kind of bodybuilder, 50 cent kind of look. Livid uh, used to sing and rap, but I don't think his rap was. And singing, just the same Niger kind of auto tune singing, but. His songs were not bad. They weren't whack, you know, but so we see more official. So I took them around and everything. They were, they got charged a whole lot of money on one of these stations. I'm not going to mention the station. So I was there in the car. I was, you know, Amanda told me to take them around and, you know, show them where to go to do promo and get interviews and everything. When the guy talked to them and charged them like 150K, I just called them and said, come. Let's drive out of the, drive out of this place. He was in Ikeja. Come on, come on, come on. Let's drive out, drive out. Let me take you somewhere. So I took them to Rhythm. I took them to Sound City. I got them free interviews. Free. Free. I held it down for these cats. You know? So fast forward to when I got to London, I called them. I was like, yo, man, I'm in London, man. I, they always used to say, come to London, come to London, come to London. I got to London, I, was like, I called them, I was like, yeah, guys, I'm in London. And they were like, where? I was like, I'm in North London. They were like, oh, it's too far. Come to South, come to South. I know that if I go to South London, they were like, where are you? I'm in Campbell. Oh, come to my house, come to my house. If I go to the house, where are you? I'm in your house. Oh, come to the kitchen, come to the kitchen. Like one of them lot, yeah? One of them ones, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> That's how people in London would say it's one of them ones, yeah. So yeah, I just felt, you know, me. I just, I'm just nice to people just because I'm a nice guy. I don't want anything from you. I'm not gonna ask you for money or anything. But what happens? Uh, I don't really feel comfortable talking about what really happened to these guys. I helped these guys when I came to Nigeria, but the the Livia guy. He tried to do some old slime, send parcel to my house type thing. Just because I was new in London, he took advantage of me because I was new in London. I don't want to go in depth, you know, but he sent some stuff to my house and lied to me. Yeah, I had no reason not to believe him, you know. But at the end of the day, in Aija, Skama is always in Gama. So, I just felt that after that, I just felt like this guy has insulted me. Like this thing has to be 100% forever, man. Like we can never be friends. We can never be cool. Never, ever be cool. Like just go your way. I've forgiven him because his brother came and you know, begged for him and all that. I've forgiven him, but I don't want to have anything to do with him for trying to, you know, take advantage of the fact that I was new in London. Whereas when they came to Nigeria, I held it down for them, saved them money, and they wanted me to get locked up. If, if we had gotten caught, if I had gotten caught by the police, I would have gone to jail. He wouldn't have gone to jail. I would have, and I didn't know that. So how would it sound like? Mode 9, arrested in London. Wow, they'll make a meal of that. They'll make a meal of that. So. That's one of the things that happened, and that's why I don't. People ask me, why don't you trust people? And I'm like, nah, you can't leave yourself wide open. I don't trust anybody, you know. I don't even trust myself fully. As long as you have flesh, blood, and bones, you could do anything, man. I could even say, okay, I'm not, I'm not drinking alcohol no more. I'm not eating meat, and the next day find myself doing it. So yeah, I did this. Uh, I hooked up with a guy called Alias. This was slightly before I traveled. Already, Da Vinci Mode was out, and Bad Man was a big single. I, you know, I, I did perform a, a lot of good shows. That song, 
Bad Man was a good single of it. Was, yeah, da Vinci Mode was a very decent effort, man. Comedy Money, Bad Man, even though half the comedians hated me for doing that. There was a time I was on radio with Shay Law and he was trying to tell Tosin, Tosin Bokno, rest in peace, Tosin Bokno. He was trying to tell her that she shouldn't play the song. She said, eh, what? I shouldn't play it. Okay, no problem. Immediately, she stopped the music that she was playing and she played it. Oh yeah, what are you going to do? Who told you that? Uh, NBC have not banned it, so I'm playing it. You know, it was just crazy, man. Those were the guys that were angry that I did. They, they this Nigerian artists all the time. So if I take a jab at you, you're supposed to take it. If you can give it, you should be able to take it. But they couldn't. They couldn't take it. Even though I didn't mention him on the track, I mentioned probably one of his bosses and they probably were drinking something together and decided to ride on mode nine. But I didn't care, man. Like you diss me in your shows, no problem. I will diss you on a track and it, that track will be forever. Your shows, everybody's going to forget. Nobody, your DVDs are going to get scratched. Nobody's going to watch it all the time. But my music, people are going to want to listen to it all the time. Go back to my catalog. So let's see who wins. So I didn't care. I, I didn't care. I was ready to ride on any of them because I didn't care. So I was in London and I was like, Obi hooked me up. We did the show. The show was crazy. Shout out to Obi Nookeji. He was like, he doesn't like this guy. And I'm like, no, 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 he's cool. You know, I had a couple of other friends. There's another friend that I had in London, but I don't want to mention his name. You know, it was a two-faced show. He's right there, jumping all around the backstage, you know, running up and down, taking pictures. I came to London to do my show. The guy gave an excuse that he's working or something. Two-faced show was done on a weekday. My show was on a weekday. He went for the, we all went for the Two-Face show because me and Two-Face are good friends. But this particular guy was at Two-Face show. And when I told him, hey, I'm doing a show, blah, blah, blah. The guy just gave an excuse. So my lawyer and the Ikuku Live man crew, the name of their label was Ikuku Live. So it was kind of like a red eye music slash Ikuku Live. But basically Ikuku Live, I would have ran with it. I would have ran with it, Ikuku Live guy was a solid guy man so i didn't have anything to fear you know obi was solid so i didn't have anything to fear i could just sit back and let him do he spent his own hard-earned money on the mode 9 project so i can't front on obi he's a good guy so we got fronted on by some of my so-called friends and i found out learned a very very important lesson not everybody who claims they roll with you rock with you are really rolling and rocking with you. You have to be careful who you hang out, who you drink with. To me, drinking is spiritual. You're drinking spirits with spirits, being spiritual with spirits. So watch who you drink with. Not everybody wants the best for you. While you're leaning over to pick something, somebody could put something in your drink. That's how close. They say keep your enemies close, but not too close with an open drink. So yeah, I recorded a project in three days, 10, 10, 10. Shout out to Alias. I recorded it in three days. I remember Obi coming to the, the house where I was, his house. And he's like, what? What? How do you do this? How? I was just writing rhymes, writing rhymes. Like, ah, how do you do this? This is incredible. Mode 9, what? You know, I finished that in three days. And then uh, shout out to Lambo, Lambo the Virus. Man, Lambo the Virus was, you know, really good guy. I used to go to his place, hang out, talk about music. He used to show me a couple of things. And he learned how to do videos in a flash. So uh, one of the first videos he shot, he got his friend Kings to handle the camera. It was a joint that uh, I featured. No, I, w I was just in the video. I didn't feature on the track. It was one of his tracks. Something Omo. Omo, Omo. <laughs> it's on YouTube if you want to watch it. Uh, just, just uh, look for Lambo the Virus, Omo. I think that's the name of the track. I'm not too sure, but yeah. I was in the video and it, it was kind of like an experiment, but the video turned out not too bad, man. It was a sick song produced by his uh, brother-in-law, Mills. That's another very talented producer. I literally watched... Mills produce a beat in two minutes and it was a sick beat too 
So yeah, man. We were just grinding, doing our thing, man. And another thing I need to touch on is fans. You know, the fans. This is just like way off the story. But I just want to say this. Fans always go, Oh, Monet, feature Wizkid. Oh, Monet, feature Common. Oh, feature Buster. Oh, boy. It takes money to do this, man. You think they're just going to come and say, Hey, because it's Monet, let's give him a verse. No, it's business. You want to feature someone, you pay. But for now, I'm happy in my own lane. I don't need to feature nobody. I got these new artists that I'm working with, and yeah, they're doing their thing. I'll see you next week. Peace.